What's up, everybody? My name is Lamont, and welcome back to the God is My Source podcast, where we bridge the gap between God, money, business, family, and relationships. I got my man Eve on the line, straight out of New York. Yes, sir. Met this man a little bit ago, and he became my brother, brother in Christ. Love can make us any better. And this man has a powerful story and testimony to tell the people. I want to introduce Eve to the people. First and foremost, we're going to open up with a word of prayer and we're going to get right into it. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your presence. We ask you to shine on us today so that we can speak to the people, speak to their hearts, speak to their minds and change them in any way, form or fashion that you desire. We ask you to bind us to your will, loose our will, and continue to show us and what the di- show us what direction you want us to go into. Yes. Be the driving force of this conversation, Father God. We ask you to touch me and Brother Eve so we may bring people to Christ, bring, bring people that have been steered away from Christ, bring them back, and be able to give people God ideas so it can help them put you first so that they can find their purpose that they can ultimately live an abundant life. We thank you for your blood. We thank you for everything you've done for us and giving us the opportunity to praise your name. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, it is so and it shall be, amen. Hey. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Got my man in the building straight out of New York. Yes, sir. yourself to the people, sir. Well, hey, y'all, my name is Eve uh, from New York City. You see my thing in the back. Um, been down to Charlotte for about seven years now, where I met Lamont. Cool dude. Listen, if y'all ever run into him in the street, just pick his brain. Yo, he'll give you so much insight on just life, period. You know, he's enlightened my life, you know. Um, so, yeah, man, so I've been down here in Charlotte for a little while. Uh, some of my friends I went to school with in Buffalo, they moved down here. I came to visit a couple of times, and I just fell in love, you know. But... You want me to share some of my story already? I mean, get into it. Let the people know who you is. So, uh, basically, a couple years ago, you hit me up if you need to have fun. I'm a turn up king, you know? I'm down for whatever, whenever, wherever, it ain't matter, you know? Um, I was someone who was always the center of attention or uh, the life of a party, not because I cared to be out there, but because it was something about me that people gravitated towards, you know? And... I grew up in the church, but when I left away for school uh, in college, you know, I kind of like took my like stepping aside and I started going a little bit wild. You know, uh, I was sleeping around. I was doing drugs, I was drinking heavily, you know, like I was, uh, I can definitely say I was, I was addicted to, to drugs, to alcohol and sex, you know, it held, uh, bond, it helped me in bondage in my life to where things revolved around my life if they had those in, uh, like impact you know I would go into work like oh we about to get a commission check oh great I can I already know what kind of drugs I'm gonna buy I already know how many bottles I'm gonna get I'm gonna try to see who I can sleep with you know like I was lost you know I was like my soul was empty but I was doing everything for the peers around me who never really cared too much about what, who I was not that they didn't care but it seemed as if that was what I valued to them when I did it you know I would do those things and then I'd go home feeling just empty and feeling lost, you know. Uh, had a couple near-death experiences. Uh, one time I almost got hit by a car, flipped off a bike, and uh, broke my elbow. Another time I got hit uh, by another car. And um, shoot, this one last time I was in a car and um, I was driving. I was drunk. I was high. And uh, I, if you've seen that last Bad Boys, you know where Martin is. Um, he's driving on the interstate and he's in that little small uh, motorcycle thing, but then Will drives under that uh, uh, 18 wheeler. Mm-hmm. So my car was small enough to where it started sliding under that 18 wheeler. Oh, I'm actually my um, where I was uh, a little bit under the 18 wheeler because I was swerving, you know, and I was able to kind of jerk back quickly. And I was like, Lord, I just need you to help me make it back home. Just let me make it back home. I made it back home. I said, All right, Lord, I'm done. Like, like, I'm going to chill out on the drink and I'm going to chill out on the drugs. I'm going to chill out on the sex, you know, like, and I truly, I, I held to that, you know, I'm a man of my word. If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. 
unfortunately, you know, like while that whole process happens, you have like a backslide here and there and I fell into the trap here and there. Um, but when I fell into the trap, I just felt convicted because I was like, Lord, this is not what I want to be doing, you know? So I'm happy that the Lord was able to help me with that. But since then, me just sharing a lot of things that I've gone through has allowed me to help myself and help other people. Uh, this girl who I used to work with uh, for quite some time, um, we were reunited and uh, she was someone who I really wanted to be with. But at that time, you know, like I was lost. I was, I would have done way more harm in her life if I tried to meet her at that time versus meet her in the time of my healing. So I was thankful for the Lord because he brought her back together with me. Um, she's now my fiance. Um, but she brought me to this church, uh, KCC, you know, it's where I met Lamont and, uh, it changed my life because it was something that I needed. Like God was using her to bring me to a place where he's like, Hey, listen, you are out, you're on the right path. You're healing. I want you to come here and get the word in and hear about my goodness, hear about my grace and stop focusing on the bad that you've allowed yourself to dwell within focus on my goodness and allow that to push you forward. So just hearing the word and just focusing on God daily uh, it's become my testimony and my obligation in the sense to share my story, share my life with people, because I feel like uh, there are a lot of things that happen in people's lives that they hold on to for themselves. You know, some things that in a sense could have broke you, but now they're, they're a big turning point in your life. Some people hold that to themselves, but I feel like God didn't allow you to make it through this turning point, through this turmoil for yourself. It's for you to share it with someone else because your testimony could be liberating someone else. You know, someone else could be thinking they're the only person there, or they may not know how to deal with it or who to speak to, you know? And uh, I remember I, the first thing I shared was on my uh, Instagram. I put a reel up, kind of just quick 30 seconds, like, hey, y'all, I was addicted to all drugs, sex, alcohol, you know, almost died a couple of times, um, committed my life to God. He's changed my life since. He's doing great things ever since, you know? So many people have reached out to me and said like, yo, thank you for sharing that. Do you mind if I reach out to you here and there just to speak to you, to have somebody to talk to? Because even though you're going through something, the people around you don't know unless you allow them in. You know, a lot of my friends did not have any idea that things going on in my mind until I allowed them in. And when I allowed them in, that gives you a different level of friendship, a different level of bond and relationship, you know, where God truly wants you to bring other people in the body of Christ. You know, not in the sense of, hey, you got to listen to God, listen to God, but more so, hey, listen, because of God's goodness, he brought me through this. It is my duty to share with you in hopes that you may be able to see the light and that you may draw closer and closer to him. So that's a long story. Sure. Oh, amen to that. Amen to that. <laughs> you never know what your story or testimony, <laughs> what it can do to change other people, because yeah. we talked about before iron sharpen iron, therefore mm -hmm. iron sharpen another, Proverbs 27, 17. And we really got to lean on that because you never know what somebody else going through. You never know how compelling anything that you go through can assist somebody else. So we know the Bible tells us that all things work for the greater good of those in Christ. So yeah. everything that you went through was just to get you to this point that you is today and ultimately get you to your expected end. But he know we have a plan for us, plans to prosper us, not to harm us, yeah. to give us an expected end. And we thank God for bringing you back into the fold, bringing you back into Christ and just showing you that love that you needed to see. So you was able to show somebody else love. And now you about to marry her. Yeah, man. Uh, me and Eve for the first time, he always was a good hearted person, good soul. He never was, he never... You know, some dudes, they walk around ego is egotistical and nah, he never was like that. He always was a helping hand, always good brother, good person to know. And I would have never even knew that was his testimony until one day he shared it with me. I'm like, real? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we used to talk about sports all the time. You know, he said, he told me he played football, with one of my guys at Buffalo. And uh, we just we we just always shoot the breeze about you feel me sports different stuff like that. And then one day he got into it, and then he just was telling me everything. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> so yeah. like, what was a turning point for you? Like, what made you just be like, enough is enough. I, I need Jesus. Oof. Um. So. So it, so. 
I think that drive that I had um, previous, so the backstory on that, I, will, I had taken a trip uh, for my birthday a couple of years back. And during that trip, you know, like I uh, linked up with, linked up with this dude who I barely knew I was like, yo, what's up? Listen, I'm trying to party, try to have a good time. You know, like met some girls, um, was drinking, doing drugs, all this stuff. And in my mind, I thought there was nothing completely wrong with that. You know, I thought there was nothing wrong with that. And to me, I think that my family looks up to me and like the fact that I do, like I'm bold and, you know, and wanting to do new things, wanting to try new things. Um, but in my mind, I said, if my family was here right now, like would they condone at this? Would this be something that would be something they smile about? Something that they like, wow, you know? And I always thought I was a nice person. I thought I was a cool person. I wanted to help people out, but I was doing things uncharacteristic of who I truly felt like I was. Um, I had one day where uh, I got paid, right? And I spent, I don't know, I don't remember how many, how much money I spent, but uh, I basically bought two eight balls of cocaine, you know, um, and I did, them, I did it all by myself, you know, mm -hmm. in the span of a weekend. Um, I had several days where I was going to work, strung out, not sleeping. Like, I, I believe I was up for like three or four days. I, I, I lose track, but I was up for several days throughout a week while going to work, um, having drugs in the car, drinking in the car, and like, because I felt like I needed that. Then there was a point in which like, I, I, I ran out and I finished everything. I said, yo, are you serious, man? Is this like, is this what you need? Are you, are you truly saying like, this is what you need? Like, I've gone through so many things in my life before where all I had to do was like pray and just continue to work and things will work out for me, you know? Things always worked out for me. But in this time, nothing was working out for me because I was turning myself away from God and I was allowing myself to focus on other people who didn't matter. Like the biggest turning point for me was just looking in the mirror and seeing that I was looking for other things externally to show me who I truly was. When the only thing I need to do is look in the mirror and confess to God, like, listen, God, listen, I'm messing up and I need you, you know, and I need you to show up and show out in my life. And he did that, you know? So I, uh, uh, at that time, like, you know, like the COVID, like COVID hit and uh, I was going through, you know, like my little backslide and back and forth. And I would just, I would just keep feeling bad, keep feeling bad, keep feeling bad. But then eventually I said, yo, this is it. Like, you are a very regimented person. Like if you're gonna do something, you can do it. Make that commitment. You're gonna give your life to God. You're gonna chill up on, you're gonna chill out on that stuff. You know, um, I haven't, I haven't had any alcohol for over a year. I haven't had any drugs for over a year. You know, I don't look forward to it. You know, it's not my thing anymore. It's not a vice to me. You know, I don't have that impact. And I'm thankful because in doing so, God showed me, hey, this is what your future could look like if you put those things away and if you fall in love with me. Mm -hmm. So that's, that was kind of like the turning point, you know? That's amazing. Yeah. So if somebody was going through what you was going through, cause I feel like it was a lot of pain. Yeah. A lot of resentment or an empty place that you was in mm -hmm. that made you draw yourself towards these people which ultimately draws you towards what you leaned on as your I'm not gonna say your source but you leaned on it as something that you felt put you in a better place yeah per se what would what would be some advice you would give someone who didn't know how to get out of that situation they weren't as strong-willed as you what what would you tell them that they could do Okay, so um, your environment is definitely going to dictate a lot of what happens to your life and a lot of how you think, how you behave, right? Um, a lot of my friends are really great people and a lot of them had no idea what was going on in my life, you know, and they would have given me the help I needed if I would have opened up. I chose to surround myself with the people who I knew were doing things that in a sense, if you were to compare, like, I'm like, you, you're doing some stuff where you can't really judge me because you're doing just as bad, you know? So the company I kept was that. I would challenge people to just 
evaluate who you're hanging out with. And there's got to be one or two people who you know that you're like, okay, this is one person I can speak to and I know I won't be judged. Because you got to have one type of outlet. It's good to speak something in your mind. It's another thing when you outwardly say it. Because now someone else is holding you accountable to it. Now someone else has that knowledge. And when I told someone like, hey, listen, I want to change. I want to do something different. They were with me. If you don't acknowledge in yourself that you want to change, you're focusing on the now. You know, you got to now start having conversations with yourself about your future. All right, cool. Eve, you're doing this, right? Boom. Where's this going to be five years from now? You know, like you think you're going to be making M's and you're going to be doing like uh, lines of cocaine and go doing like a seminar on money and finances and tech and stuff like that. No, you're not like, like those things don't align, you know? So you, you're lost if you don't have that focus, if you don't have that aim of where you're going to. So the people who I would speak to are the people who are still trying to figure out what their end game is, what their journey looks like, what their purpose looks like. Because those people who don't have that thing identified, they're a little bit more susceptible to be influenced by things externally. If you have that path that you know, then you can. Then you should be able to acknowledge, have that discernment, and be like, nah, "I can't do this. This, this don't align. Not expedient. I'm good. Not beneficial to me." You know, so like it's it's kind of. I feel like it's a uh, it's it's easy to say, but very hard to do. You you definitely gotta want you gotta want your future more than you want the immediate. Put away those childish things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm changing your environment. I think that's very uh, important and something that we all need to understand because each and every last one of us has a seed. God gave us tools, gifts, insight, all type of things that if we don't put it in the proper environment, we can't cultivate that seed so it can grow to be what it's fully potential to be. Yes. And a lot of people think that they can still continue to live loosely and still prosper the way God wants them to prosper. You can prosper without God. Like, that's like, Mm -hmm. we know that in the Bible, when Jesus was in the wilderness, the devil brings jesus up yeah, yeah. to the mountain and he says all of this you can have if you bow to me so we know that it isn't just god who can bless you with things the enemy can bless you too as well one thing god was telling me one day it was i was just driving and he was like you ever he said the reason why you gotta pay be mindful of what you do and what you say is because Blessings can come from me or the enemy. Because, mm. And and you can't work for one and think that you're going to get paid for the other. So if we, both of us are landscapers, right? Yeah. And I work for you and I work for Fred. If I decide to work for Fred on Saturday, are you going to pay me mm. for the services I was supposed mm. to? And yeah. if I work for you on Saturday, is Fred going to pay me for the services? That's true. And if you do pay me, you're going to want some in return for it. True. And, and the thing is about God is, is he allows us to veer one way, still collect a paycheck and work part time. But it comes a point in time where he will allow us to reap what we sow. Mm. He brings us back to show us, hey, I told you don't touch the stove, it was hot. It's hot, ain't it? It's hot, Mm -hmm. it's hot. So we gotta be very mindful of what what doors we open up. Cause when we open up the door for Satan, we can't control who we bring with him. We, we We open up doors to so many things, knowingly and unknowingly, when we're just like out there living in the wild doing what we want, living how we want, speaking how we want, not being mindful that like, um, like our words do have power, you know, and the things that we do matter. People are watching us who we don't even know. 
and the people who are impacting are impacting other people. So there's a compound effect on your behavior, the compound effect on your words that's going on like around the world. And once you acknowledge like you're a walking epistle for people to read, you know, like people are looking at you, especially the minute you make that hour declaration like, yo, bro, this is not my life, this is God's life, you know? Mm-hmm. you know? Like once you do that, you realize that everything I'm doing now is onto the Lord. And he's like, everything that is supposed to happen is gonna happen according to his will, you know? And just because you make that declaration doesn't mean that thing from the past may not try to come back. Like those, those, uh, uh, those seeds that you've sown in the past, you know, like I just pray that God like uproots them and just, just destroys them. But some things may come back, you know, but you gotta be mindful that the things that you're doing, hey, chill out, Lord, I'm sorry. You know, I repent, I'm changing my ways. You know, help me through these times should anything pop up from my past. You know, it's in my past. It's no longer in my life and no longer has a hold on me. That's how I operate, you know. No, that's good because God don't judge us. I mean, Mm -hmm. he don't want us just to do whatever, but he don't judge us. And he don't because it's never about what you did. It's, It's really about why you did it. And also, too. We know that all things work for the greater good. So anything that, one thing uh, a lot of people take out of context when Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Mm -hmm. People think that some people, not everybody, but a lot of people, they utilize that scripture as in, I can do whatever I put my mind on, I can do whatever. The context of that scripture was, "I I can go through all things through Christ who strengthens me. Like, I bet you a, a, a one of the versions probably says that. But he's talking about his journey, mm-hmm. what he went through, and how he ended up in this position. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I think if we look at it that way, it'll bring us more to a conviction of understanding, yeah, I did this, but Christ going to strengthen me and I'm going to get through it. I'm going to get to my, my expected end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, 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 I might've messed up, but I'm going to get through it and get to my expected end. Because one thing that you, you, you show in your story was perseverance mm-hmm. to the fullest because perseverance is wanting a outcome going towards that outcome, but even resistance to mm. get there it probably was a battle and a struggle for yeah, you to- yeah. even to like e- even to this day you know there's, there's so many things currently that uh that i'm going through like personally things that like i'm trying to i'm trying to war through but i know that all this is for a reason uh and i know that the things that i've gone through like the delay on my like a deliverance if you will um it's just making me stronger you know like the uh anything that might be let's say a mental a mental slip you know when it comes to um drugs and alcohol like if you think about it i don't want to give any i don't want to give any room for it you know but in that time the challenges of going through it knowing that there's an expected end i don't know the end but there's going to be some reason that all this is uh, happening uh it could be partly, it could be because of me, you know, because I'm doing something that, that's making it happen and like I'm not moving in God's will or God needs me to see this side so that I never come back to it, so that I never like uh, put my trust in that, put my faith in that and like have that as my source. God is my source, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like, I try not to get weary and well doing what, what I think people believe that, I, I'm not gonna say people, but from my experience, I think that when he, people hear like, oh, I'm giving my life to God, I'm committed to this church, I'm doing this, I'm walking with Jesus, you know, they think that life is going to be easy. Like life is never, like life is never going to be easy. You know, it can be smoother and it could, it could be as easy as you make it. There's going to be things that you struggle with, but all things do work together for your good because you love God and you know that he's going to get you through it. So the things that I've gone through, it's been tough. I can't say it's all been easy. And obviously you was like, oh, and I wish I wasn't going through this. But I know there's a reason for it. And you're going to show me it at the end of the day. 
Mm-hmm. Psalms 23. As I walk through the valley of shadow of death. Fear no evil, man. I fear no evil. Because <laughs> and it ain't even cliche. Mm -hmm. It's real life out here. <laughs> he, gives, he gives you the, like, what's great is that he gives you the grace when you mess up because he, because he sees that, right? He's sovereign. But he also gives you the choice in choosing that mess up or choosing to go with him. In choosing that mess up and choosing that, that path that's not him, you now rerouted your destiny, like your, your end game. But in you choosing that thing that's not him, there's a lesson that you're going to learn from that that brings you right back to the, the path that you're supposed to be on. You know, so I'm thankful that he gives us the choice. I'm thankful that he gives us the grace to be able to make it through those things. No condemnation. Mm -hmm. No condemnation. You was able, how was you able to? Because I know one thing. A lot of times when we going through something, we don't get out of it because we don't learn how to forgive ourselves. Oof. Mm. How was you able to come to a circumstance to being able to be like, look, I forgive myself and I'm about to move forward. So I was, I never really tried to judge other people, but I was a harsh judge of myself. Like I would, ooh, I would get down. I would get on myself hard. I'm like, yo, you messing up. You, you messing up. My sisters would always tell me, you got to give yourself some grace. Give yourself some grace. You know, like you can't get everything perfect. I was mad with myself because I said, yo, Eve, you wasted so much time and so much money doing the wrong things, focusing on the wrong things, you know? But God gives us this time back when we commit our lives to him, you know? For me, to forgive myself was a big thing because I had to tell myself, hey, everything that you did was in your past and it's okay to forgive yourself if you're going to allow those things to be in your past. But if you're going to just say, I forgive myself and then go back to it, then it's, then it's pointless. Now, um, I had to forgive uh, people around me who might have uh, who might have hurt me or who might have who could have been there but they weren't or people who I wanted to be there but they couldn't be there because they didn't know um, I had uh, uh, things from my childhood that would like pop up in my mind and I'm like yo this this is possibly a reason I'm doing things like this you know I didn't have my dad around much when I was younger you know and I held a very strong grudge against him and you know like I had to I had to tell myself, like, Eve, you, have, you have to forgive. You have to forgive and let it go, you know, because you're now going to the point where it, it, it costs you so much to hold on to something negative. Just the baggage is weighing you down. You free yourself. You liberate yourself when you're given that freedom. God forgives us for so much. Forgives us for so much. We, man, listen, we, people go through a day, 24-hour period, and they go through so many extended periods of time where they forget to thank him for just being able to breathe having the mind to, to make that right turn, having the mind not to get into an accident, you know, like just to be in things that we take for granted, you know. If he forgives me for so many things, I got to be able to forgive people, you know. Like, um, like me and, uh, like me and my fiance, like we have, like we, like we have two different, uh, like lifestyles and living. Like I'm very, I, I guess OCD, if you will. She is not so much OCD. She's not messy. She just does, like, it's not a big deal for her to be OCD, you know? And for me, I'm like, nah, I need you to be this way. I need you to be this way. She's like, bro, it's not that, it's not that big of a deal. You know, like, everything's going to be fine. And find a compromise and be like, you know, like, e, are you seriously going to hold a grudge because someone's not going to be OCD like you? Like, there's a reason behind your OCD. And that comes from, like, something possibly not working out in your past. You forgive that so you can get to the root of what else might be holding you back. You know, so I forgive myself for the company that I kept that made me think that I needed to sleep with people uh, like day and night just to feel like a, a, a macho man, um, that I need to spend money on uh, drinks at the bars, that I needed to be out, you know, having that FOMO, like when it comes to that Thursday night, that Friday night, that Saturday night, Sundays for football, when people are out and doing stuff, you know, allowing yourself to fall victim of that, you got to forgive yourself from that because you know, like, hey, I just wanted to have fun, but you know that in your head, that fun is not a short-lived fun. It's you're doing more than that. Mm -hmm. you know? So I forgive myself for everything in my past because I no longer held to it. And I forgive myself 
for everybody who's been around me that um, I haven't been the best to, you know, I've made my amends. I've reached out to people like, Hey, listen, I apologize for this, you know, and what people do with my, what people do with your apology is on them, but you do need to forgive them and forgive yourself. If God is going to push you to that next step, because those are just, those just chains, those just bondages holding you back in your future. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Do you feel that a lot of the stuff that you was doing was, putting you through a situation where you was trying to distract yourself so you can make an excuse for how you truly felt? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, once I found like a, a circle, you know, outside of my, like, like my main ride or dies, uh, I was doing the drinking. I was doing the drugs. I was doing the partying. I was doing a lot of that to not spend time with myself to not spend time with my thoughts and to not spend time with God. And mm -hmm. in doing so, I was numbing myself to the things that were truly in my mind, saying, hey, I want more out of life. Hey, I want to do something that's productive. I want to do something that's valuable. I want to have an impact on lives. You know, um, you, you, have, you have like so many, like so much that you take in as far as drugs and alcohol go, just so that you can numb your mind to, the things that are going on around so that you don't have to worry about it. But what you don't realize that you're numbing your mind from that. But once you are left alone, those are going to come back even harder. You know, same thing for like, for like sleeping around, you're sleeping around women, creating all these soul ties, you know, with people who mean nothing to you, who, you know, you don't have a future with. And it's going to bring something negative into your relationship, you know? So you just pray, you got to pray that, Hey, listen, I don't want to bring anything to my relationship. I don't want to do anything negative, you know? So those things, those were activities that I was doing to numb myself from addressing myself and addressing who I was, who I wanted to be. Um, you know, I, I think uh, going to be around people and force myself to be social was the biggest way for me to not address myself, to not address the issues and not address myself cleaning up, you mm -hmm. know, so... Did I answer your question? I don't know. I, 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 I took a... No, nah, you good. You good. <laughs> you, you basically created this whole metaverse. You created your own reality because mm -hmm. you didn't want to face your true reality. Mm -hmm. Did you ever go to therapy or anything? No. Um, I, uh, so, so it was funny. One, one, of the, uh, one of the guys who I was, um, like who I was uh, regularly doing drugs with, like we would always just talk about like life, you know? And uh, which, which, which was which is funny because I'm in my mind I'm always like yo I'm gonna be doing this for life man you know and like no that was that was, that was stupid you know but um, I forgot the question man <laughs> my um, did you go to therapy no 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 so the, so like the conversation that I was having with people when I was on drugs and when I was doing alcohol those are conversations that were ingrained in my mind sounds weird because the conversation we were having some of them were actual had very much content in it and a lot of them were very superficial i hate living on the surface level you know like it's hard for me to have that very surface level like conversations with people um and interact with people like i want to do something that's impactful when i made the commitment to change it was easy for me to allow myself to work through it in the sense of outside of therapy because my fiance like she was one she was one of the first people who I just gave everything to like I was very intentional with the dating I said hey listen uh there's some things I want to get off my chest if we're going to be serious about everything like I want you to know everything about my past and the fact that she didn't judge me and didn't have any like yo what you know like that allowed me to be like okay, I can share all this with her. Not in a sense of, hey, I need you to be my therapist and walk me through this, but I need you to hear me out and to see how this may have an effect on me and help me through some of those times and not judge me, don't chastise me, don't cast me aside for something like that. You know, she was very accepting about that. And that acceptance is something that I needed. You know, I think for going into therapy, you're wanting, you're looking for acceptance, you're looking for the recovery. And I was on the recovery aspect, but it was a recovery that I was having um, intimately with myself and with God. 
and I didn't have any outward reach. She was like my first point of contact to where I was like, hey, I'm shedding everything with you. So in a sense, she became, my, you know, like my therapist. She shared things with me about herself and about her past. Um, so we were doing it in a sense for each other mutually um, to where that was our form of therapy. And now we can speak on it in conversation. We can reference it and be like, hey, by the way, like, I wonder if this is a result of that. You know, like, what do you think? Mm hmm. Oh. Look, ladies, uh, she the, his fiance, she she was his piece and she done got the ring. Listen, hey, yeah. I, I kid around a little bit, but no, nah, for real though, it's 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 something that we we I wrote this down the other day. It was like we in our community we have accepted hurt so much mm. that we feel as though whoever does the most disrespect or the most showing least of the feelings or connecting most emotionally or helping the other person most emotionally mm -hmm. wins the battle because if the other person does the other person wrong, it's like, well, I got what I wanted out of the situation or well, at least I didn't give my all in the situation. And that could have went the other way if she would have been like, oh, yeah. that would that that definitely I would mean. have that would have hurt so much. And it would have like calloused. It would have allowed my heart to callous to the point of not caring anymore, not doing anything. Um, I think and social media is great for a lot of things, but I feel like a lot of it in social media, I think people are waiting it too much into it actually having an impact on their lives. And like, uh, life shouldn't be like that. You shouldn't be trying to get one over on someone. You shouldn't be trying to do people dirty, trying to get it. Like, I, I think that's just a terrible way to look at, it, you know, and you being like, oh, hey, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give my all in this because I don't know what you're doing. You know, like that's a bad way to look at it. If you give your all in this situation, if things don't work out the way you wanted it to, then it worked out how God intended it to, you know, because if you're truly committed to something and if it's not working out for you, God is going to change it to a way that it is working out for you. Or he's going to separate you from it. But if you're just allowing yourself to go through the, 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 the motions, like relationships that may not be, like, that may not be great. Guys, you know, the girl, girl knows guys, you know, uh, on her. So she goes to do her own thing. So they both toxic to each other, but they won't leave each other. They won't talk to each other about it. That's terrible, you know, um, because I found her and she was able to um, hear my story and be there for me, not judge me, to support me and push me, you know, excuse me, push me to a place of, um, hey, listen, this is a safe place. We can talk about anything. That was when, like, God was like, hey, listen, I'm telling you, this is why I brought her back in your life. This is your wife, you know, mm -hmm. and if you're going to go into a relationship, a business or something, you need to be able to have full trust in that other person. I don't have any doubt in anything that she does, anything that she says. She, she, my face is on her phone for a face ID. Her phone is on my face for face ID. Like she can take my phone whenever. I don't care. You know, there, there, there's nothing that I hide, you know, and because of that, she's my accountability partner. And if there is a point where I do something that may seem sketch, she's going to call me out on it. And I might not think that it's sketchy at the point, but she may show me, hey, listen, this is a trigger for me because this is how I saw things in my past and I don't want it to become a thing. Mm -hmm. I urge people, if they're going through relationships when they're in those places where they feel like a level of hurt or they don't feel like everything is like out in the open, you have the authority to speak your mind. Hey, what is this? I think people are scared to have those conversations still. Yo, what is this? What are we doing? Like you... You get on a plane, not to stay on a plane. You get on a plane to get to your destination, you know? So you're dating for a destination. What is this, what, what is us dating supposed to be like? Are we going to be dating for years? Are we going to be talking for years? And you're going to be doing like your own thing? Uh, are you helping me through things? Are you talking to me about real life? Do you know about who I am? Are you helping me out in my future? You, are you helping me out with my business? You know, like, shoot, you and I, we both don't want to work for somebody, you know? Like, we don't want to continue working a nine to five, Every day, that's not a great way to live. You can't be there for your kids. 
you can't be there for like, you know, your, your relationship, you bring in so much stress out there. So her and I are very much in tune with each other emotionally, as far as our past goes, things that we want to do for the future. And that was very much so important for me to be able to have on my side because it's a constant partner for accountability, therapy session, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. It seemed like y'all was able to both compromise with each other, not as more so of, well, I want this, I want that. It was more so, well, what can I do for you mm -hmm. type situation? Because I noticed that a lot. I mean, I noticed when, it, like you said, with the internet, I mean, we can't really go off the internet, but that's what, what we see. And I see a lot of times it's about what can I get from the situation? I remember one time I posted on social media, uh, you say? A lot of women, I said, I said, I said, it's a lot of women that look good in 2021. Like a lot of women look good. Like you can go to the, go anywhere right now. You can find a woman who fine. Like she got everything on your checklist. But I was like, what else y'all bring to the table? And a lot of women took it the wrong way or they, they didn't understand what I meant. And I was trying to clear it up, but I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about sex. I'm not talking, I'm not talking about, no, I'm talking about what else are you are you willing to assist with as far as emotionally character wise because black men mm. we don't really get an opportunity to like have somebody really there for us and then a lot of times when we do we don't know how to handle it so we mess it up you feel what i'm saying like so now you messed it, this dude messed it up. She like, well, I'm not going to do that no more. Now she go through her whole life talking about she, I need to get to the bag. We're, we're, we're the dudes that who spend the money or whatever. But she really just looking at this this way because she like, all right, if I'm going to be in a situation with a man, I need to be getting some out of the situation. I'm not about to be giving my all emotionally and I don't get whatever. And then vice versa is the man. He might have been put in a situation where he like, hey, last time I did that, this didn't end up too well. So now I ain't doing it like that. I'm just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to hit and, hit and go. Like I'm trying to hit and go. Or I'm trying to get into a situation where I get her as vulnerable as I possibly can just to tell her like, oh no, nah, I'm, I'm cool. Like I'm cool. And it go for the dudes too. It wasn't just a, situation like because i was I, I had to get on them too like but i really was trying to understand like okay like you look good what's next what like, else? yeah what, what else is going to be done because even on the male side it's like if you got a whole bunch of money like you can have a whole bunch of money and be providing but you're not providing because you really only getting money and you and that's what make us go into the street so much because we get money just to say we got money or just to be on some ego or be on some macho or whatever but it's really to cover up the insecurities of not working on other parts of ourselves it's like this woman looks good because if she looks good she doesn't have to be in a position to where she has to work on those things that that are wrong with her or nobody probably ever even told her that these things were some things she need to work on this male he he gets money or he he mm -hmm. in the uh in entertainment or in uh, uh, we're gonna say nfl nba or he just get money in some type of way but he puts all of this in this basket so he never has to be put in a situation where he uh -huh. has to, to yeah. care about the other party it's like oh you don't want to do what i want you to do I'll get another one. She like, oh, oh, you don't want to, you, oh, you don't want to, oh, you don't want to go to Barney's today and buy me this purse. Oh, I'll go get another one. Just to mask the fact that I'm not working on myself. And that's something that we really gotta, we gotta work on. So, yeah. like, what brought you to the point where you was like, all right, I want to take this girl seriously? Mm -hmm. Cause you talk about your fiance a lot, which means that you you really care about her. So this ain't fake. This is real. Yeah, it's real. You to the point where you was like, all right, uh, I'm throwing in the towel. So um, I so I grew up, my mom, uh, 
my dad wasn't around and I got four sisters that I lived with, right? And um, so I, I was around a lot of women. Um, the majority of the, my cousins are women. Like there's probably like two, so there's like one man and, and like each uh, family. But I always know that I, I always knew I wanted to be in a relationship. I always knew I wanted to have a companion, a lifelong partner to do stuff with, like to have fun with, you know, like always have one person. Where that got clouded and where that got cloudy was when I started to take the opinions of other people at a superficial level as having a real meaning. You know, like you, I would hear people say, so, like, so I'm 6'5", like at a point I probably was like the 230, 240, like I worked out a lot. People were like, oh, yo, if I was your height, if I was your build, like I'd be talking to whoever, man, I'd be doing everything anytime I want. You know, and in my mind, I was like, yeah, you know, I am good looking. I, I talk to whoever I want, whatever I want, you know? And I was, and like, I fed into that. Mm-hmm. And I was feeding into that, not acknowledging what I truly was had on my mind since a kid of wanting to be in a relationship, wanting to do things, you know, with one person. When I found that one person, um, you know, like when I met her a couple of years back, only thing I saw was I said, yo, Lord, like th- th- there's something here. Like there's something here. I don't know what it is, but there's something here but I can't go into this right now because my mind is too messed up right now. And I need to fix myself before I come back to this. So you met her years ago. Mm-hmm. How you meet her? So, um, so, so we both, we both worked at enterprise. Uh, I was flying out and, uh, she had worked at the airport. Um, I don't know where I'll find out to, but I met her for a split second. I said, Hey, how you doing? Introduced myself and say, Hey, I'm a manager out at this branch. So, and so I spoke to her for like less than a minute, mm-hmm. less than a minute, bro. And, when I was walking down, I said, I said, good Lord. I said, yo, something is there. Like, she's fine, yeah. It's like, but it was like, there was something past the, the mm-hmm. her being fine, you know? So I, um, when I started being on the sense of healing, I took a break from social media. I was off for like several months. Um, I think the biggest thing of our relationships is you have to pull away from social media because it's going to cloud your mind. You want, excuse me, you want to like, the Bible says to protect your heart, right? Like, I'm not talking about just your, 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 your carnal heart, your human heart. Your heart is your mind, you know? And the gateway to that mind is the things that you see, things that you hear, you know? And, like, a lot of what you see and hear is going to be through social media. And you're getting people who are celebrities who are giving you so much toxic messages, people who are um, um, social media famous, you know, giving you so many toxic messages and it's having an impact and it's changing your course of thinking without you acknowledging. So mm-hmm. I said, I need to, st- I need to step away from this. Cause if I, if this is going to work for the future, like I got to purge my page from all these people who I follow, who got nothing but bad stuff to say, um, and focus on the word and get in the word, let the word get in me. And it just kept telling me about like how I need to be rooted and how I need to be this person and that person. I see myself as a deliverer for my family my breaking generational curses and mind thinking, like how we think and how we operate. But you can't do all that by yourself, you know? Mm-hmm. And if you're truly going to have yourself and help me, you need to be able to bring yourself in a place to receive. If you're going to receive anything that the Lord has for you, you got to position yourself to receive that. So when I met her and like we came together, it was funny. So she actually slid in my DMs. It was funny because I was I was working out, uh, I swear, I was working out and I had just posted a picture. I said, um, today's workout, uh, I was out of the park. I said, today's workout was some, some burpees or some bike riding or whatever. And then she was like, oh, yo, where's that park at? And she, she, when she messaged me, I said, God, is this you? And you had not talked to her since you had met her at the airport. You probably just followed her, started liking pictures or whatever. We had, we had worked in the same district, but when we had worked, like, I was very surface level. I never say anything. The people who I worked with knew I was fiending for her, yo. Like, they're like, <laughs> I would talk to her and I'd be like, like oh, my love. You know, like, I was, I was like, she never knew, but everyone around me knew. Um, and uh, when she kind of slid in, I said, all right, well, hey, listen, if you're trying to work out, let's do it. We worked out. And then after the workout, we, we was talking about real stuff. Like, we talking about how her and I both faced a certain level of like persecution in high school and college because we were considered like the 
proper black kids, you know, like, mm. you no, know, you weren't received well in one group, but you weren't fully received in another group, you know, and like how we had a chip on our shoulder and blah, blah, blah. And like, and just us being able to be transparent from jump about something like that. I was like, oh, okay, there's something here. Let's keep building, you know? So that I can never say that, I can't say we have not had a moment where we're like, yo, I can't do this. There might be times when we didn't see eye to eye, but we are both more mature enough to never like really, we, we never really spaz on each other. We haven't yelled at each other still to this day. Like if she's annoyed about something, I'll, I'm able to tell and I give her her space. If I'm annoyed about something, she can tell, she give me my space. And then when we're cooled down, we can come and talk about it. And mm -hmm. I told her, I said, I'm thankful that we're able to have uh, differences, but come together as adults and speak like this. In my past, how I would respond in a situation like this was very unhealthy. And, this and how you receive these uh, um, like conversations like that tells me that you're in this for the long haul. And she says the same thing, you know, like how we um, speak about the differences that we have and how we speak about things that we want for the future. Our future is very much aligned. Um, her vision is very similar to my vision as far as not working for someone else, but to work with each other, doing things like to help other people out. Like we want to have a presence in life, basically like, you know, evangelizing, you know, but her hearing her say that and knowing that it was in my heart was great. And for her to hear me say the things that I wanted to, I was like, okay, yeah, we got to do this. And to me, I, like, shoot, I would have, if I had, if I had the bread, if I had the ring, yeah, I would have proposed to her so much earlier, you know? However, um, we had to take this, we had to take a second because we knew, okay, like this is what God wants. God wants us to be together. So when you, like, you know, when you get a gift, you kind of like, oh, I want to get in this real fast. I want to spoil everything. Mm -hmm. But we tried to, we tried to reap our harvest too soon. Mm -hmm. The Lord basically like condemned her. You know, he was trying to get me aware, but I wasn't trying to hear it. Cause I was like, no Lord, I'm loving this. And I'm like, I'm loving being around her, you know? So we had, we split up. We, we, we were, we were apart for about six months. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it hurt, you know, a lot of people didn't know, um, but it hurt for us to take a step apart, knowing that this person who you're going to be with for the rest of your life, but we had to take that time apart for us to focus on what God needed for us to get. Um, he gave me visions and gave me ideas of things that I was supposed to be doing for my future to set myself up. You know, like if you have a thing about like, oh, you're about to be married, you're about to be a father. It's kind of scary because you have no experience to it. And the Lord is like, if you truly want to succeed in this, I need you to be by yourself for a second. Because the minute you get married, your, your minds are focused on each other. You're not focused on me. And, uh, and us taking that time apart, we never lost sight of what we were doing. We never questioned each other about what we were doing while we were apart. I would still see her at church. We would check in every once in a while on the phone. Um, but when we came together and we picked back up, we were just speaking about life. Nothing. It just was just straight, just... Yeah, I the church or mm -hmm. go wrong. Or what's up? Yeah, yeah. Is that like so? It was, it was hard because because in my mind I was like, yo, my God, this is my best friend right now. Like 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 you about to? I gotta pause this. You know, so it hurt. Um, and it was very hard for me to receive. Very hard for me to receive. Once I like, and for me to get through that tough news it was basically like, okay, hey, what are you gonna do with this? Is you taking this break? Does that mean you want to go leave and do something else? Mm -hmm. Or are you truly trying to see what God is doing here? You know, and, and me acknowledging, you know, like I had a choice. God gave me a choice of what I wanted to do. And within her, for us to be ready for this time. So like, we're not perfect. We're not ready. Um, we're not 100% ready for like marriage. We're not 100% ready for kids, but we're, at a place that we both acknowledge that we have things to work on and that we want to work on them together and that we want to continue to help each other out. You know, so like uh, it was, the, the separation was tough, but it was so, it was so necessary uh, for us to focus more on each other, on, on ourselves. I truly believe the fruit of the spirit is love, right? So you got to walk in love, be able to love your fellow man, uh, be able to thank people, forgive people, but also out serving like out serving your significant other. So I try, I always try to go above and beyond and do things for her whenever I can, you know, it cause it costs me nothing to, to be of service to her, do something for her. You know, she may have a hard day. 
I'm gonna try to take her out or I'm gonna try to get her some food or maybe I go clean up the apartment for her or something like do something that she's like, oh, this is one more thing I gotta do when I get home, you know? And other people may see him like, yo, you sound like a sucker, you know? Mm -hmm. And to those people, I'm like, you really are trying to keep tally. You're trying to go tit for tat. Life shouldn't be like that. Life should not be like that. You should allow yourself to have fun, enjoy life, you know? And you should be able to get something when you see that person smile from a gift that you did or from a, from a surprise that you did. You know, when I do those things for her, it truly makes me happy to see that. So when I see, when I hear people talk about, oh, nah, well, yo, you trying to buy me a Louis bag? Or, oh, nah, I'm not trying to highlight this girl and she's putting out. Like, my friends know, don't, don't come talk to me about that. You know, like, if I have any friends who still live in that realm, I'm like, yo, bro, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? You got one more for life. That, that is literally the conversation I have with all of them. Yeah, I know you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. The everyone, no one else is going to teach you who you are except for you. So take the time to be by yourself if you need to. Because if not, you're just going to hurt other people. He's going to be like cancer. Got to know who you is. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, I was just sitting here typing down some things that you had addressed. Like, so many times, it's like, even on both sides, the women's side and the men's side, it's like, you looking for somebody to like, make your situation better. Like, you feel what I mean? Like, but that's not how it's supposed to go. Like it's, it has to be a situation where you go through a self-development process and you like, I want to be able to be the best Lamont I'm supposed to be. And then once I'm the best Lamont I'm supposed to be, I can go, all right, this is Ashley. And Ashley, oh, she done made sure that she, that should be what's attractive about her, that she wants to be the best that she's supposed to be, whether I'm with her or not. You feel what I'm saying? Like, and now when we come together, our, our collaboration is not based upon what we can do for each other. It, it, if we was together or not, we still would treat each other the same way. Now it comes a situation where we're like, oh, maybe we can, we can, maybe we can, we can do this. Yeah. You know yeah let, let, let's, let's test it out. And then I think ultimately if we, if everybody can go about that situation like y'all did, I think that will be amazing. Finding yourself first and understanding who you are, where are you going, mm -hmm. what you supposed to be doing in life and then understand, okay, this person can match it. Like this person can go along in a journey and they're not going to hinder me because if I'm on a, as a man, if I don't got a vision and I don't know where I'm going. You're the head of the household. Where you going? I, I, what I'm going to do. Like I got to, I got to, because people don't even know what submitting means. Submitting don't mean, oh, you do whatever they say. The Bible tell us, he say, Paul tell the, the men, Husbands, love your wife like Christ loved the church. Yeah. Women, submit to your uh, wives, submit to your husbands. That's meaning I love you no matter what you do, no matter how much you talk, how much you get an attitude, no matter whatever it is, I love you regardless if I chose you to be my wife. Mm -hmm. And then for you, you yield to, submitting means to yield to the direction, yield to what we about to do, understanding that, yeah, this is what we about to do, whether you like it or not. This is what we about to do because this is going to better our family and you should be able to trust me to do that. So now if I can't love her regardless, and I should, we should know this beforehand. Mm -hmm. If I can't love her regardless, so if I can't if I can't take her personality that much, to the point that I'm like, I'm cool, I either need to go step out or I need to leave <laughs> her, I need to divorce her. I shouldn't have married her in the first place. Yep. And if you, and if woman, you feel as though this man, you can't listen to him. You don't want to do what he say do. Why is you with him in the first place? But we don't even take the time to even find out if that's what we want to do because we get so caught up in the flesh or we get so caught up in wanting to be with somebody or so caught up in looking at the world standards or so caught up in looking at a timeline and what we want that we never find out who we are, what we looking for. I know most men don't even know what 
what they they really like for real. They don't even understand what type of woman they want. What what, what they uh, they might know what you want her to look like, but it's other things than just how she looks. Like, what if she the finest woman in the world? But you call to be a people person. You called to be a speaker. You called to go to different places, but she yeah. don't want to go nowhere. Uh. She she isolates herself. So now she don't never want to go nowhere. Y'all 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 always got yeah. You're uh -huh. Or or she a negative person. You should have known she was negative before you married her. Or did you know she was negative and dismissed it? Mm, yeah. The sex was good, or you did? Did you dismiss it because she looked like Lauren London? Did you dismiss it because she had all the physical features that you wanted, or she had she was successful on her degree, or it looked good for you to be with her? Mm -hmm. These are things that we should adjust as men and as women. They should adjust too, and we can be able to coexist. Um, I think that. Uh... Like you got a lot of people who are trying to, I mean, I, don't, I try not to speak on other people's situations because I don't know everybody, but like, I feel like it's common for people to rush into a relationship because it's like, yes, it seems like, oh, this is a good fit. This person benefits me in this way, or I can get this from that person. And I think that's just such a terrible way to look at it. It's like, hey, listen, sure. They may have these things. What does this all, what, what do they bring to the table as far as the future? Does it look like this is a good piece? Not everyone's gonna have the same personality. Not everyone's gonna mesh. Are the things that are different about us, are those things that I can compromise on or are those mm -hmm. deal breakers? You know, those are conversations that we had early, you know. Um, and for the man, it is so important for you to be rooted and to know what your vision is because you're supposed to be the head of the household. You are driving, you are you flying the plane, you know, like, like. I am the person to take us where we need to be. My fiance, when we get married, like she, like she is, she's my co-pilot. She's helping me get the details. She's helping me figure everything else out. I'm like, hey, babe, this is what the plan might be. Let's elaborate on this. Help me figure out how we can make this work. Or come up with an idea or come up with a planning on this. Schedule these things out. You know, this is what our five, 10 years look like. You know, if a dude can't really speak to you, like, let's say on first date, hey, this, this is what my future looks like. These are things that I want to do. These are steps I'm taking toward it. Then y'all shouldn't be talking. So I'm not even saying y'all shouldn't be talking, but if there's not a desire to figure out what your five-year looks like, 10-year look like, y'all shouldn't be talking. Same thing for the women. Hey, listen, what do your plans look like for the future? You know, like, does it, are, are you okay with, uh, with, with coming down? Like, I don't are believe that. Hurt to submit, are you? Yeah, like I don't believe that women should be the alpha woman. You should, you do not need to be. You should not be the loudest person in the room. You should not be the loudest person in the conversation. You know, like you are. How do I say? Like, like the wife's purpose. Um, you know, like she reverenced the husband. Like when, when I'm missing, my wife is gonna represent me to the fullest. You know, she's going to command the same amount of respect that I command. People going to give her that because they know who she's with, because they know whose last name she shares. But also at the same time, she knows that she is a vital, she plays a vital role in my prosperity. She plays a vital role in who I am and where I am. And because of that, like her value is far above rubies, you know, like you, you can't put a dollar on her. You can't mm -hmm. try to buy her with a bag. You can't try to buy her with some red bottoms. You know, like I, I want to be able to give my wife the world. And when people say like, oh, I'm wasting time doing this and that, like people talk about like, oh, having the bag. I look at it this way. Sure. You may make six figures, but you're working a nine to five. Hmm. You now have a Crazy. couple, you have a couple hours of personal time to yourself. What are you doing to cultivate the ideal relationship that you want to have or the ideal you that you need to have in a relationship? My five to 10 year looks like, sure, I'm going to be making well over six figures. I'm going to be in the millions, but I'm going to have the full day to be able to work alongside my wife, to work together with her, to help other people, you know, and because we know that that's our, that's our mission. That's like, that's what we want to do. Like that's important, 
And this time, we get married in a couple months. Mm. I said, babe, I'm not scared about getting married. I'm not scared about being a husband. But there are things that I know that God is going to reveal to me and things that I need to learn, things that need to be identified within me to make sure that we're established for our future. And I need you when I tell you like, hey, listen, I need this time apart for you to be able to receive that. You know, she is very receptive of that. She acknowledges like, hey, listen, if I need to be in my space to hear from him, then I need to do that. We often take fast, you know, in a sense from each other where we don't talk, we don't text. We know, like, we don't share stuff on social media. You know, like, we take our time apart, whether it be oh, fast. fast. Yeah, fast man. Each other. I yeah, ain't never man. heard that. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's, it's funny because you, you can't cry over something that you like, like, that you think is lost. Like, I don't know. Like, mm. she's never missing. I know where she is. You know, she's like, she's in the body of Christ. She's with me. We may not physically be together, but our, like, you know, but we're tied together for life. Uh. And if we take the time apart, she's like, babe, listen, there's something that like I've been going through. I'm like, okay, cool. Dude, let's pray on this. Okay, let's fast on this. Hey, let's see what God needs us to do on this. Same thing for me, you know? So she acknowledges that I'm going to be the one giving a direction. She's, been, she's like, hey, listen, whatever it is that you need to hear God on, do it. You know, and if you truly believe that you hear from that, then let's, then let's go with it. You know, she doesn't second guess me. So ask me questions like, hey, help me understand this. How do you see this working? But she's but but she's down with the cause. And I know that anytime I have an idea, we'll speak on it, we'll sleep on it before we act on it. Uh, and because I see that from the friends who I have on my social media, and the like there's a few celebrities that I follow, like not a lot, like a handful of people, but not a lot of people would give you an in-depth look at their lives. And that's what we want to do. We want to share our lives with other people. Not, not in a sense of like, hey, listen, like you all got to follow me and like look at how I'm living, but more so as an outlet so people know like, hey, this can be done. You do not have to do this the superficial way. You do not have to do this as a tit for tat. What can I get from this person? Figure out what the future is that you wanted to have for you. Build on that and identify the relationships that you're having now if they're profitable. Now, every relationship is profitable, and it may be tough because you may have to put, like, your family on a break. You may have to put your friends on a break, like, yo, y'all cool and all, but I need something from God right now, and I need to move, together. and I can't do this. I need to get it together. Mm -hmm. I see I see, a, I see a, a, a YouTube channel or some type of uh, advice situation in y'all future because, I mean, Funny you say that, man. Huh? Funny, uh, funny you say that. That's in the works. Okay. Yes, sir. Assist some people in, like, cause you what what you identifying to me is y'all dated correctly. Mm -hmm. I know, like, I go through my things with with different women, and uh, I know twenty twenty one. I was like, I'm I'm good. I'm I'm about to get to, like, I was already getting to know myself like probably upwards of 2017, 2018, but it was for yeah. selfish reasons, selfish gain. It wasn't for me to be what God called me to be. 2020, I took some time. I was still battling with my flesh and trying to go back and forth with God. But then 2021 was like, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm cool. And one thing I had to understand was something that you just highlighted was like I need to be putting myself in the best position so that whoever I decide to spend the rest of my life with how I develop my family I can't be living for myself no more I got to be living for my my grandkids my mm -hmm. my my great great grandkids a good man leaving an inheritance for his children yeah, sure. and it's yeah. not just about money it's about knowledge it's about wisdom it's about integrity it's about relationship building the way i treat other people the way i i show myself one thing i was talking to one of my good friends today and he was talking about uh how one thing he emulates in his in his marriage and his life he like i want my daughters to not just listen to what I tell them, but I know that they're going to develop their 
personality and develop their character based on what they see me do. So I want to want them to look at me as an example of who they yeah. want to be. Cause a lot of times we are, well, I know we grew up, it was what it was. A lot of times we yeah. hearing this, we hearing that, do, do, do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. But when we see something else emulated, we like, wait, you said don't do this, but you, <laughs> You you doing this like how many times we done had uh, mm -hmm. our uh, somebody in our family telling us yeah y'all don't be what y'all doing don't be y'all be drinking I better not be smoking y'all and then you you show to the party you see that oh, was rolling up you like oh messed up wait, you you rolling up they oh yeah nephew you, you eighteen now you want it you like wait so now you thinking in your head is everything is is mm -hmm. opposite now because you like wait. Yeah. You told me one thing, but you, I don't get it. So I think that's something that we really got to pay attention to. You identified it. You just helped me out because I'm like, I'm already knowing. I'm like, hey, look, I ain't about to even, I'm not, first of all, I'm not about to waste my time. I'm definitely not about to waste her time either because, I mean, we definitely have to pay attention that our actions affect other people. And I think y'all really took heed to understanding that. You took initiative. I think uh, being con like being consistent in that action speaks volumes, you know, like like your friend trying to trying to make a good example, you know, it's like, like your kids gonna watch what you're doing over time. Not just that one time, you know, so it's like, you got to be in your mind and do the right thing all the time, not just because someone's looking, you, like, not because you think someone's looking, but someone's mm -hmm. always going to be looking, you know? Um, for for us, like, it's like, hey, like, we got to be consistent in everything that we do, everything that we say, because how we treat each other now is going to be very consistent with how we treat ourselves when we uh, have kids. And I want my kids to be able to grow up and see, like, their mother and father, like, in love, dating, and, like, like, what it feels like to be surrounded in love, you know? Like I truly believe like the levels a child could prosper when they see love in the family, when they see camaraderie, union, you know, and like uh, like a cohesive message, not a, oh, I'm gonna ask mom, I'm gonna ask dad, cause they are gonna say something different. Now, if your mom says something, it's gonna be the same thing I'm gonna say, you know? Uh, but if the same thing she's doing, I'm gonna be doing. Uh, to be able to set that example and be consistent is so, is so important. And I think that you identifying that you don't want to waste any of your time, waste someone else's time is important because the other person who like could truly, let, let's say, let's say you got a girl who got eye on you, you know, and she's like making it apparent, like, yo, listen, like, I want to holler, but you making it ever clear, ever so clear, like, hey, listen, I got something I need to focus on myself to do. And you mean, you genuinely mean it, you know, like the woman has to be able to receive that. If she doesn't receive that, then she obviously is not the right person, you know? <laughs> exactly. You know, and the same thing for the guy. Like, isn't, like if the girl's like, yo, listen, I really can't do this right now. Or like, I need a time to myself. You need to be able to take that and not think that she's trying to play you or have something else, you know? Now, obviously, it might be where they say one thing and they do another. But when you get to know a person, you can see that their actions are lining up, mm -hmm. you know? So the things that you do and like the fact that you have people around you that are going to consist that are going to be consistent with their you know like people are going to be down for you regardless people are going to be like all right damn he's doing he's he doing his own thing you know i respect that i'm gonna let him have i'm gonna have him space and when he's ready to talk we're gonna chop it up and pick it up like nothing happened but the people who were sent you for taking the space that you need to to focus on yourself then like you know like that shows much about them to where it's like hey listen they may not be the people who need to be connected to you as you continue to elevate. Maybe they could be friends from a distance. Yeah, definitely. And you got this shirt on because. Ah, yeah. I know, I know you, 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 I, I watched you grow and deliver your message to people. What, what do the because, what do it stand for? What do it mean? Yeah. So um, I basically just uh, had this out and because God has been good to me. Because God has given me a testimony that I want to share with people in hopes that it may deliver them, you know. Um, the scripture I got for it is they overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the, uh, uh, by the words of their testimony. And as everyone speaks about the things that hold them back, the things that they keep secret, that's where the enemy uses 
to have an influence in your life and makes you think that you're not deserving of God's grace, of God's goodness, of the treasures that God has for you. But we're joint heirs, you know, mm -hmm. we're joint heirs. And the way that we're supposed to be moving, we should be working together with one another, speaking together with one another, walking in love. And I made the, because, just because God has been good and because you have a story to tell and because you have a cause and that you want to be a cause in someone else's life that they make a change. You know, I want to be a cause that my family comes closer to God. You know, like my, my, my family knows God, but I want them to come in closer. Mm -hmm. My extended family, you know, my cousins, people who I don't know, you know, I want to bring them in closer. So for me, this was more like a, a first step to the things that I want to do in life. But this first step was more so of starting a conversation. You know, I'll wear the shirt and someone will say, hey, because what? And then I'll turn on, on my back, there's a cross. And I'm like, well, it's because God's been good to me. He's given me a testimony to share in hopes that other people speak on things that they're going through in their life. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, uh, uh, you actually, a uh, conversation you and I had, uh, man, I'm telling you, Lamont, conversation you had with me just had my brain spinning, man. <laughs> we was talking one day, uh, and we're just talking about like just, just get, getting behind something and getting people together, you know. And I felt like me starting because was a very big umbrella to a lot of things, like because this can help people who are in alcohol addiction, because it can help people who are a drug uh, drug addicts, sex addicts, people who have suicide uh, uh, scares, people who have like um, things that they're afraid to talk to people about, you know. Like this is a one step. That's the first step in the movement that I want to have and basically bringing more people together, you know, how you're bridging the gap, like on your end, I want to be able to bridge the gap on my end where it's like, hey, listen, y'all, let's not be scared about bringing God up in everyday conversations. Like, mm -hmm. like it's all right to talk about him, you know, why not? Talk about it. He's giving you something to be talking about. He's woken you, he allowed you to wake up. So you should just be able to rejoice in that. Um, so I, I truly believe so much in the message and in the cause behind uh the because life like so that, that's the business name the because life um i truly believe that message just because there are so many things that people can share with one another that would help each other and in doing that bro that's like a that's like a, a godly way of like networking you know i could share my story with someone who wants to help fund my next uh project you know like like there's so many different ways, so many different avenues that God could use the stories. If he be lifted up, like he'll draw all men, you know? So mm -hmm. I truly believe that uh, continuing to speak on the things that he does in my life is helping me out, things that he's doing now, you know? So uh, that's basically, that's been our mission, mine and hers, uh, where I share a lot of things that I've gone through. She's sharing her things. Um, and then we're sharing our joint stories. We're sharing what we want to do for the future. And it's because I've been fortunate, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to receive such a, a blessing and being able to be uh, blessed by others that I want to be a blessing, you know? So I want to make sure that I'm able to impart something, whether it be my words, whether it be my testimony, whether it be my money, um, time, whatever. Like I want to be able to do something to be able to give back because God has given me my life back. You know, that's amazing. Hey, man. Thank you. Not like y'all are basically have found a remedy to, to cure mental health problems. It's utilizing God to utilizing God to cure people from different mental health issues. Yeah. It's so there's there's a level of freedom that comes, you know, from like just being able to speak something that you've kept to yourself outwardly to someone else and you know they will not judge you. You know, mm -hmm. when someone shares something heavy with me, I'm just like, wow, thank you for sharing with me. Thank you for thinking enough of me to share with me. That means a lot. Is there anything I could do to be of service to help you out? You know, like some people may want to share, not even for getting advice back, they just want to allow someone to hear. And it's therapeutic in a sense to where someone else is speaking about something that they may be struggling with or something that they have struggled with, not knowing how to have it out. You know, um, I think that uh, because you have, how'd you say, it's a, 
I want to say it's not a catch 22, but you're forcing people to be vulnerable, you know, in a sense that they can build up the strength from that vulnerability. You know, mm-hmm. when you're weak, that's when God is strong. You know, so when you're speaking about everything that he's brought you through, he's like, thank you. Now let me work you through this next step. I just needed you to confess that one thing to one person and outwardly speak on it to move forward. Now you can move forward and walk past this. Now allow it to not allow it to not have like a, a hold on you. I've had people who speak to me about um, overcoming drug addiction, uh, alcohol addiction, uh, depression, um, battling suicide, um, rape, um, mm. uh, like uh, gang issues. You know, mm. like like people spoke to me about like so many different uh, uh, areas of life, and I'm like, it's not it's not uh, enclosed in just one section or one part of someone's life. It can be translated into so many different walks of life. And it's just something that you need to allow yourself to be open to the discussion. That's dope. That's dope. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what, what this going to turn into. I know we have multiple conversations. Amen. Every time I hear it, it escalates my, my thought process of what this can turn into. This is going to be amazing. Where can they uh where can they what where can they go to like get these shirts or anything like that? Yeah. So um so my personal Instagram is uh Mr. Edmund, Mr. Underscore Edmund, E D M O N D. And then my business uh page for the Because Life is the underscore because underscore life. That's on the Instagram. Website is the because life.com. Uh, you know, I'm dropping a couple of things basically like every month. I want to have something like here and there. Next year, like the probably second quarter of next year, we're going to be doing a couple actual events um, locally, some pop-up shops, kind of doing some guest speaking. So I look forward to doing that. We'll be um, doing like some flash sales of like limited merch for like that specific event. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited for what God has in store for me as far as what else he wants me to do, how he wants me to use this. Uh, you know, so be it under me. Hey, what did he say? Uh, or Prophet Carr say? I'm excited about your future. I'm excited about your future. Yes, sir. You that's, know. that's dope. I, uh, I'm looking forward to it for sure. Make sure y'all check out the Because Life. I got to give me some. I got to give me a little sweatshirt going. It'd be cold up here in Cleveland. Oh, man. Oh, I got I got these hats that I'm about to put out. In the the hats, too? Yeah. Oh, man. I'm going to <laughs> I'm gonna have to lock in. Yes, sir. I uh, appreciate you for hopping on. So where you where you see everything going within the next five years? Where you see yourself in five years? Yeah. So before next year is over, um, I'm the I'm declaring this, and I'm this is recorded, so y'all can hold me to this. Before 2022 is over, I will not be working my nine to five for someone else. I will not. I will be working for the Lord, whether it's going to be me working full time. Through this well sorry i will be doing full-time with the because life i also will be doing full-time um as far as a new adventure that uh, me and my fiance are going to do together um where we're just going to be kind of sharing our lives our testimonies but also the things that we're looking to do um uh, i look forward for that kids are going to be coming up in the future so once like uh, i want to be able to be in a good place so that when we have kids we're not struggling for nothing you know, we're able to live well. We're able to have them in a good place. Um, probably see us doing some things like some, some real estate. Uh, I want to be able to, to bring my family and my friends in into the joint business ventures. You know, um, a lot of my family members like social, like specialize in so many areas, um, teachers, uh, social workers, uh, uh, production management, uh, like uh, insurance. I see ways that they can be plugged in. Um, I look forward to working with you on a couple uh, business ventures. You know, there's some things that you have um, planted seeds in my head about, you know, about some real estate stuff, you know, so I know we're going to work together on that. Uh, but honestly, in five, like in five years, I'm not going to be worried about money. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to be living in a nice house. I'm going to probably have a couple other properties there. Uh, I'm gonna be able to be in a place financially 
to allow my family to work together with me and set their nine to fives. Um, but everything that we're going to do is going to be according to the Lord's will. You know, I don't want to do anything for my own glory. I don't want to do anything to be able to say I did this. No, like all this that I have, everything that I will have is because of God. And that's always going to be my testimony. Amen. Appreciate that. That's, that's just helped me out understanding some things, man, because you got to be for his glory. Mm -hmm. Gotta be for his glory. So many times we we think we here for ourselves or we got our own timeline. We got everything. No, we gotta be able to understand that we are here to be servants to the most high, here to serve each other, love your neighbor as you love yourself, iron sharpen iron, but it's all because we have to get we have to be the presence of God here. We gotta be. Somebody got to see God through us. Like we got to be the beacon First. light. We got to be the beacon light. We got to give God the glory in everything we do, so that others can see it and they come to Him. My prayer is that uh, that His light shines within me so bright, so all men are able to see. You know, like regardless of if I speak to someone, just how I carry myself, how I interact with people, other people are able to say, "What do I need to do?" Like mm -hmm. to get closer to God. You know, like, and I'm, uh, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a pastor. You know, uh, I don't see, I don't see that in my future. You know, I don't mind speaking like in groups to people. Um, but, uh, I love my pastor, you know, like I'm not gonna, I don't ever want to try to replace him. I want to learn as much as I can from him, be of service to him. Um, but in doing so allow myself to be of service to other people and bring more people into the body of Christ, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, in that, I just want to, continue to share like my real, like raw um, testimony, like my day to day, like my life, things that I struggle with, you know, like there's always gonna be something that you may struggle with, um, but speaking about it outwardly just helps bring so many other people together. Amen, yeah. amen. Appreciate you for coming on here. I um, held you up here so long. Thanks for having me, man. You gonna help a lot of people out with that story, though. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. You gonna help a lot of people out with that story. You are gonna bring a lot of people to Christ. Just keep doing what you're doing, man. For uh, sure. Like keep doing what you're doing. It's needed. The body of Christ needs you. These couples need you. These men need you. These women need you. And y'all just keep doing what you're doing. I might have to get. I might have to do a whole little segment. I might got to get both of y'all on here. Yeah. You know I say. I Hopefully. think it's important. Uh, I think it's important for people to see, and not to say that we have like, like not to say that we have like the uh, the ideal relationship everybody needs to aspire to, but we are okay with being transparent about every single aspect of our relationship, and I want that to be magnified for other people to see uh, instead of other people seeing just the bits and pieces of other people's lives yeah. that they show you. Definitely, definitely, because these women, they need to, they need to see. That is, it's not, it's not unobtainable. Like this can happen. Cause I, I talked to so many different women, like they, some of them gave up on the whole situation. Mm -hmm. Some men I know, they don't even want to look for it. Like, but seeing y'all situation and seeing everything that y'all been through, watching it grow, manifest, it's amazing to just look at it and, and be inspired by the whole situation and yeah. be inspired to be like, all right, I'm, I'm getting married too, for sure. Like, <laughs> real, like, yes, sir. Well, good talking to you, brother Eve. Appreciate yeah. you for coming on here. Thank you. Lead the people with some uh, words of wisdom, something they can they can take with them. Um, he who compares himself to another is not wise. You know, exactly. seek ye first the kingdom of God. Make him number one. And everything else is going to fall into place. He will give you the desires of your heart, not the desires that you currently have. The desires that you may have may be for vain reasons, for fleshly reasons. But he's going to give you the true treasures of your heart, the things that you will look and say, Lord, I don't know why I didn't even think about things like this. I don't know why these things weren't on my mind. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for giving me your mind to seek you. Thank you for, thank you for allowing me to be in a place of service to give glory to your name. Mm -hmm. Like that's how people should... Uh, take their day-to-day -day lives. It won't be easy all the time, but know that he's got your back. You've got an advocate, you know, so he's got you. Amen. Amen. Appreciate that. That's, 
That's a, that's a mouthful right there. Because he who compares himself is unwise. You can't be covered in nobody. You can't be worried about his situation. You can't be worried about her situation. You can't be worried about nobody's situation. You got to trust God, trust in the Lord, all your heart, lean on to your own understanding. All your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Like I said, appreciate you for hopping on here. You want to close us out in prayer? Oof, yeah. Father God, I thank you for allowing us to come together. I thank you for your presence. Lord, I thank you for guiding us, giving this conversation and enlightening other people's lives. Lord, I thank you for allowing our testimonies, our visions and our stories to be a way to bring you glory. Lord, I know that everything that you're doing now, tomorrow, and in the future, Lord, is all going to be according to your will. Allow that to be our testimony that we get out of our own ways and do things your ways because your ways are higher than ours. Lord, we thank you. We love you. In your mighty matchless name. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right, Brother Eve, we, we signing out. The God is my source podcast. You already know what time it is. We're going to keep this going. Bring more people to Christ. We keep yeah. it real on here. We're going to talk about we're going to talk about it all. We're going to share this. Share this with everybody. Share this with everybody you know, family, friends. We're going to, we're about to, we're going to change the world with this one because God is our source and we want to amplify it. We want to be examples of Christ while we are here and we want to live an abundant life. So yes, we're logging off. God is my source podcast. Peace. Yes, sir.